Hi there, what we're going to do in this video is put together a sorted cross tab inside Alteryx. So the design of the output for this particular cross tab uh, that I'm going to do is going to contain the month and year in columns and then a product name in, uh, in the rows. And the values for each row is going to represent the quantity or some quantity of that item that has been sold for each month. I'm using a sample data set from the AdventureWorks uh, Data Warehouse 2016 database that's uh, publicly available from Microsoft. I'm also going to place this file out on my uh, GitHub repo for this project so you can download it and use it as your example. So let's jump on over to Alteryx. Okay, so in Alteryx, we're going to have to pull in some of the data that we're going to use for this project. So we'll pull in an input data tool here. And I have the file saved in a, as an Excel file, just a sample file. As I mentioned, I'll drop this in my GitHub repo uh, for you to download. We'll take the first sheet there, and uh, let's just do a, a simple browse tool off here, uh, run the file. Uh, of course, I have it open, so let's go ahead and close that here, and uh, let's run it. All right, uh, let's look at the browse tool just to see what kind of data we have coming in. So I have the product key, uh, an order date key that was part of the data warehouse, the uh, order quantity, sales amount, product name, and uh, inside the data warehouse, uh, AdventureWorks database, there was a dim date table where I was able to get the English name uh, of the month and uh, the calendar year. Of course, we could have done this in Alteryx as well. Uh, parsing out the order date key if we wanted to, but it's just easier to get it from there for this example. So um, we're going to do this uh, one way just to show you how it's unsorted and then how we're going to sort it. So I'm going to go to the transform tab here and we'll take the cross tab tool and we'll uh, drop that in. And inside the cross tab tool to get this to be set up correctly, uh, we have to choose the group where we how we want to actually group the data and for this example uh, we're going to group it by the English product name so we want that to be the uh, the first column and the product name to be the rows and then um, the new column headers we want that to be the uh, English uh, month name and then uh, we want the product key to be changed to the uh, quantity, order quantity uh, for the values of the new columns and we want that to be summed. So to recap what that's going to do is it's going to create a row for each project for each product. The columns are going to be the months of the year and the values for each cell in that cross tab is going to be the sum of the order quantity for that product for that month. All right, I've only pulled in data for 2013, so that's what's in your sample data set. So we're just going to get January through December of 2013 when we pull this in. Uh, and we'll go ahead and do a browse tool here also. And uh, let's run it and we'll see what the output is. So when it's done, click on my browse tool. You'll see that I do have the product names. <clears throat> They're in alphabetical order by default. I have the sum of the quantity, and then I have the months of the year. Unfortunately, they're sorted in alphabetical order as well. So we have to make a few changes here to get the sort to come out correctly for the cross tab. And um, we don't really want to hard code this in in case we change it to, uh, say, we'll do maybe like June of 2013 through May of 2014. We would still want the month to be sorted correctly from left to right. So we want it to be a little bit dynamic uh, when we build it rather than hard coding some of these values in. So what we'll do is we'll take in a formula tool here. All right, we're going to drop this into in between where we've loaded the data and uh, where the cross tab is. And we're going to add a couple fields in here uh, to this particular item. So we're going to uh, add a column. And I'm going to call this uh, month, month and year uh, order. And uh, we have to write a very simple uh, expression here in order to get this to 
to sort the way that we want it to, and basically to have a value that represents the year and the month. So we already have that in the order date key. Uh, and so to get that, we'll use the left uh, expression here. And then this field is a number, so we need to change this uh, to a string as well. And uh, that field is the order date key. So we'll take the order date key. Uh, we want the whole field, so we don't need the second portion of that, um, that field. And uh, we also don't need the length either uh, because we want the whole field. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We want, uh, we want the first six characters. We don't need the day uh, of that order. We just need the month and the year. So we'll take, uh, we'll take the first six characters there. All right, so that gives us the order that the column is supposed to be placed in. And then uh, just to show you sort of how this gets built uh, with some of the other fields that we have, we need to concatenate this onto something uh, that we can use to build the order plus the um, month and the year added onto it. So we'll take that piece. Um, I called this month year order. We can actually use what we just built into, uh, into a current uh, formula or into another, another field. And um, I'm going to add this as a new column. What I'm going to call it is month and year. And uh, we'll say uh, padded. So I'm padding it with the order that I want it to go in. Uh, and then I'm going to say um, plus. We're going to add a uh, double quote here with a dash. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add in um, the actual month and year, uh, the English name month and year that we've had before, and the calendar year onto it. So we'll do uh, open bracket here. English month name. And I'm going to bring these down another line so they're a little bit easier to see. So let's do that. And then we'll say uh, added onto it, we're going to put another dash between that and the calendar year. And for the calendar year, we probably need to change this to string also because it's probably a number. So let's go ahead and do that. Make this a little bit bigger. OK. Looks decent to me. So we'll have basically in the front of this the sort order of how we want these months uh, to be laid out. And then, uh, and then the actual month name and then the year. So let's go back to our cross tab, and we're going to change this. Instead of English month name, let's change it to month and year padded. And then let's run it to see if it's going to come out the correct way that we want it to come out. So we'll go over to the order, and we'll see now it's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, so on. That looks, that looks right. Now we need to remove the padding piece, and you'll also notice that in the column names, it replaced the dashes with underscores. So having the dashes in here was kind of pointless. We could have just put uh, underscores in there. Um, anything, any of those characters, it's going to just replace it for the column names. So now we need to make it dynamic uh, in the way that it grabs the padding, strips the padding away from the order, and then replaces it with a name that looks decent on the cross tab. Uh, if we're going to say we emailed this out from Alteryx, we can just keep it that way. So we're going to use a tool uh, that's uh, called the Field Info tool, and it's actually inside the, uh, I believe it's inside the Developer tab. Here it is right here. So Field Info. So we'll take that in. And uh, what Field Info does is it grabs for each column, like English product name, and for each of these columns that contain uh, the quantity, it's just going to give us the name of that field, the type of that field, and then some other metadata about it. So to see that in, in detail here, let's just go ahead and drop another browse tool on and then just run this workflow through. And you can see the output here in the browse tool. So it gives us the name of that field or column, the type, whether it's string or double in this case, size, 
if there's any scale associated with it at source. And then if we had a description, it would be there. Uh, so I need to go now and change the remove the padding from this name field since we're going to feed that back in uh, to a final output here. So I'm going to move my browse tool down and um, we're going to add a formula on here again. So let's go back to preparation, choose formula, drag it in here. And uh, what I want to do is take the um, the input here and say if it's if it's a double, if any of the if any of the field types that come through here are a double, that means that it's a column that I need to rename that I'm interested in renaming. So to do that, we'll just do a simple if statement here, and we'll say if the type of the column we're getting that from the field info right here. If the type equals a double, then what we want to do is replace the characters that are in uh, that particular field. And we'll say we also need to do a little bit of substring here too. So we're going to say um, if the uh, name, so we'll use our open bracket here again, uh, starting at uh, sixth. Oh, I said that wrong, sorry. Starting at seven. And then um, going on for the rest of it, we'll just leave it. It doesn't need a second parameter there. And then we'll take uh, if there is a, an underscore in this particular field, then we want to replace it uh, with a space. Uh, if it's not that particular field, uh, and then we just want to return uh, the name back here. So in essence, what we're saying is for only the double fields, that's not the string that has the actual product name in it, uh, go ahead and replace any of the spaces or any of the underscores with uh, spaces. There we go. And only take from the, from the seventh position on because each of these are going to have that sort padding in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from this point on in each of those column names, only take uh, that that part on and then remove any underscores that it finds. So it's uh, sort of an embedded or a uh, combined function, uh, two functions in, into one there. All right, so that should do it. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll right click on the end here and pop a browse and after just so we can we can see what it looks like uh, and we have a little bit of a minor error in here so let's go ahead and clean this out oh yeah we need to assign it to a column we want to replace it with a name that looks good uh, and then let's just run it through and see what it looks like All right, so we yeah, have English product name. Looks, we're just going to leave that the way it is. We could clean that up more, but we'll just leave it for now. The uh, name of each month and year, and it's got the underscores removed. That looks fine. Uh, so now we need to go and add in a dynamic uh, rename tool. So we're going to go over back to our developer again, developer tab, and we'll do a dynamic rename. And we'll pull that in. We do not want this going to the left side. We want it going to the right side. So we'll pull the right side in there. And then uh, we want to take the left from that field. OK, let's click on, on this here, get it activated. And we're, we're not going to use a formula. What we're going to do is we're going to say we want to take the field names from the right input as rows. All right, and what that should do is it should replace each of the column names with the row names from this tool, from the formula that we built. So again, let's go back over and just do a quick browse here. And let's run the whole workflow. And look at it here and in this particular browse tool. So you see the product name is listed there. The, uh, the sort order has been preserved and the padding has been removed and so have the underscores with spaces. So everything's laid out good. From here, it's looking decent. If I were to change anything in my AdventureWorks 
data source for the time frame. So say I made this, you know, July 2013 to June 2014, uh, this would still line up correctly and it would still come through uh, with the correct format and layout of each of those items. All right, go ahead and give it a try on your own. I'm going to post all these files out on, uh, out on GitHub so you can download them yourself and work through it.